Good Monday! I have been putting this off for eternity. I was going to measure the thickness of this pre-68 skillet that we cut in half a long time ago. And I never did. Now what I did do was try to get a close-up picture of the layers of steel and copper. And we zoomed in and we'll show those in a second. If you Google a good copper thickness for a pan, it recommends two and a half to three millimeters thick for good even heating. I'm going to guess this is close to one millimeter thick. I've got to make sure it's at zero, zero. We're going to zero it out. Zero it out. Now, let's, me let's measure this baby. We got to go right to the edge. 1.3 millimeter. We'll do it again. We'll do it a couple of times. I can't see! Oh, it sucks getting old. 1.36. All right, we'll zero it out. And one point three four, one point three five. For the sake of rounding up, let's round it up to one point four millimeters. So Google said we need two point five to three millimeters of copper for it to be a good copper pan. The steel and the copper together, we're getting one point four if we round up. Okay, we are well under that. Let's check out the photos. If the stainless steel and copper were identical, they'd be 0.7 millimeters. But they're not. There's less copper. We're going to guess that it's between 0.5 something to 0.6 millimeters. The fact is, the copper's, boy, close to half a millimeter thick. That's just not good. I've said it before, Revereware, man, it's collectible, it's Americana, it's everywhere, it's shiny when it's new, it warps. Revereware is kind of like toy cookware for adults. You know, it'll last forever, warped or not. The copper thickness is just enough to not disappear over time. But it's, it's thin. Hey, thanks for joining me this Monday. You know what I'm going to say. What am I going to say? Thanks for watching.